Breaking it all down, I'm Count Zero. It's been a long time since I said that it was coming, but now the time is finally here. This week I am taking a look at the novel Black Blade by Eric Van Lustebeter. Now before I get too far into the novel, I do need to give a quick refresher on one of the important things about this book, which is the US perception of Japan in the late 80s and early 90s. I went really in depth on this when I did my discussion of the US box art of Mega Man in my little two for one column a couple episodes ago but if you don't want to go through that here's a really brief primer in the late 80s and early 90s the US was in a recession much like the one we're in now around the same time we basically had a situation in Japan where they were a bubble economy much like the one we just came out of and so Japanese investors were basically spending a lot of money in the United States on American businesses, American real estate, and that sort of thing, including taking jobs overseas, which in turn led to a backlash in certain conservative circles in terms of politicians, writers, entertainers, pundits, that sort of thing, all basically saying the Japanese are trying to steal our jobs and our businesses and so forth. However, at the same time, Japan was being romanticized in U.S. pop culture as well. Japanese animation appeared on Western television in the form of Voltron, Robotech, and Battle of the Planets, and Western martial artists like Chuck Norris and Steven Seagal were on the big screen, demonstrating both their martial arts skill and their inability to act their way out of a wet cardboard box, along with also, of course, all of those various Shokusuki ninja films that came out as well, which I should probably review at some point in the future. Even business executives were caught up in this, with works like Hagakure and The Book of the Five Rings getting moved to the business section of bookstores as a way for American businessmen to, to catch up on their Japanese counterparts, while likely looking like total idiots in the eyes of their Japanese counterparts. American thriller writers like Lustbader loved this, writing thriller novels which made Japan as romantic and erotic as it was dark and sinister with evil, scheming businessmen plotting to overthrow the West as geishas, geishas provided there and the readers most darkest and twisted desires. Now, this book's plot is a convoluted mess, so I'm going to try and summarize it as best as I can. If you find yourself being lost at any point in this book's plot, or I'm describing it, or find any big gaping holes, don't feel bad. I had the same problem when I was reading this, and there are bits which I still have difficulty trying to explain in brief. Our main character is Wolf Matheson, a psychic, half Native American, loose cannon cop. He's in charge of the NYPD Special Homicide Task Force, which handles the cases the rest of the force can't handle. The police commissioner likes him because while he's a loose cannon, he gets results. The captain of the NYPD, on the other hand, doesn't like him because the captain is head of the evil black cop conspiracy, a sinister cabal of almost every African-American law enforcement officer in New York City, all working together for one sinister cause. That cause to put down the poor, innocent, hard-working, white beat cop. I shit you not, one of the antagonists of a couple in this book is a conspiracy of evil black cops out to put down the white man. What the hell, Lustbader? Did a black cop run over your dog? If things hadn't gotten silly enough, it gets worse when Matheson is put on the case of a New York tycoon who was murdered mysteriously. Matheson learned the dead tycoon had been tasked with infiltrating a mysterious Japanese secret society called the Black Blade Society. This society not only controls all of Japan, but also the economies of all the world and has secretly been murdering members of Congress who have been trying to limit Japan's attempts to conquer the U.S. with money. Matheson is asked by a member of the U.S. government, Thornburg Conrad III, to investigate this murder and stop the conspiracy. 
Standing in his way are the Black Blade Society's psychic assassins. However, while Matheson is more of a conventional Western Esper type of psychic, the Black Blade Society's assassins are more of a anime type of psychic. Anyway, the levels of sheer rampant stupidity held in the pages of this book would take two episodes or possibly even more. So I'm going to try and summarize with some examples. A whole line of the New York City subway system is shut down because the entire city block collapsed due to disrepair because Japan controls our economy, but yet no one in New York cares. There's rampant poverty due to the Japanese causing the U.S. economy, economy to collapse, leading to favelas appearing in New York, though they don't call them that because most Americans don't know what favelas are yet. We have flashbacks to Matheson's vision quest and his time in the Vietnam War for purposes of unnecessary cliché in the first part and to reveal that Matheson knew both of the Black Blade Society and knew Conrad before the events of the book despite no such hints earlier in the book. We have Matheson's fiance being murdered by a Black Blade Society assassin and said assassin putting Matheson into a coma leading to Matheson emerging from the coma and almost immediately seducing his fiancée's sister. Matheson's lead in the Black Blade Society is also a Japanese artist named Chika, who is also a psychic and who is also an exhibitionist who was seduced by Matheson. Further, Van Luce has an obsession with the Japanese film in the realm of the senses, as if it somehow explains everything you ever wanted to know and were afraid to ask about the Japanese cultural outlook on sex and sexuality. Then there's the MacGuffin of the whole piece, the Oracle, a psychic, artificially created organic intelligence. Or in other words, it's a cybernetic psychic brain in a jar, which has engineered much of the chain of the events in this book to find someone to kill it. In other words, this book basically is an elaborate suicide plot on the part of this character. And finally, last but not least, throughout the book we have an assortment of sex scenes with, that can best be described as being at the Skinamax level. Too explicit for an R rating, but stopping just short of being straight up erotica or porn. Further, none of these scenes fit organically, no pun intended, into the plot, stopping the flow of the narrative stone dead every single time they show up. In short, Black Blade is a terrible, terrible book. Now, if this book was just limited to the anti-Japan xenophobia that was going on and all the other stuff back then, including books by Clancy, books by um, Clive Cussler, I'd cut him some slack. I, I could see Les Bader giving an argument that he didn't actually believe this, everyone was doing it, you had to do it to sell. I'm not going to, to wouldn't totally forgive him for it, but I understand why he did it. On its own, the Edge Japan racism combined with the terrible, terrible prose in the book, the shoehorned in sex scenes, the psychic assassins, all of that on its own would make this a train wreck in slow motion. It would be possibly Les Bader's old shame, but a hilarious, hilarious old shame nonetheless. But that's not what we got. The inclusion of the me so horny stereotype for chica which is I mean it's a horrible racist stereotype of Asian women the inclusion of that the evil black cop conspiracy leaves with the the, the all the racism in this with an undercurrent of that this wasn't something the editor forced Eric von Luspader to do this isn't something pushed in by executive meddling this is something that perhaps Eric Van Luspetter actually believed that he was in fact a racist motherfucker. Admittedly, it's been 20 book, 20 books. It's been 20 years since this book was published, and depending on how fast Eric is churning out the books, he's a thriller writer. 
you got to practically turn those out once a year. Um, there is a distinct possibility that he's put out 20 books or more since then. And he's re perhaps recanted his beliefs, and his more recent books are better. Going from the dust jacket of this thingy, he'd already done, oh, ballpark, let's say, 15 books already in his career. Possibly he's done even more since then. But still, take it on this own. This book, I mean, no matter what, this book will leave your palate with a bitter taste of bigotry. Give this book a miss. Find something better to read. I mean, honestly, Clive, Cut even Clive Cussler, who succumbed to this himself, has much, much better books than this one. Check one of those out instead. Next week, I'm moving back to video games with something significantly better as I take a look at the latest title in the Uncharted series, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Until next time, thanks for watching.